The Badger 2 Medicine. But the Badger 2 Medicine is this little area, and by little I mean maybe 130,000 to 160,000 acres of land in the Rocky Mountain Front. It is often overlooked by people, but it is actually one of the most important, if not the most important, sacred site to the Blackfeet people. And it is of the utmost importance. And today, there's been sort of um, a claim to try to do some dubious things in the Badger 2 medicine. So let's go ahead and talk about it. First of all, let's just basically talk about what the Badger 2 medicine is geographically and historically. So how it came to be and what it looks like. So our story begins in the winter of 1883 and 84. The Blackfeet people uh, just killed their last buffalo. They had their last hunt, which only got like a few tiny, a few animals in the Sweetgrass Hills in 1882. So that was their last hunt. And this winter, they've got no more buffalo, meaning they have no more way of supporting themselves. So unable to uh, support themselves, they flee to the Indian Agency, which is set up along Badger Creek. But of course, the Indian agency wasn't expecting to have thousands of more people or hundreds more people come and, and ask for assistance. So they were completely unprepared. And as a result, over 500 Blackfeet people starved to death that winter. So significant that the, people, that the Blackfeet today remember that winter, the winter of 83 to 84, as the starvation winter. So as a result of being completely crippled by hunger and poverty, the Blackfeet, when asked by the US government to sell the eastern portion of their land highlighted in red there, what could they say? What could they say? They're so poor, they're so impoverished that they basically had to agree to the $1.5 million offer to sell that eastern portion which unfortunately, it included one of their more sacred sites, the Sweetgrass Hills, which is in that little red circle, uh, which is in the north central Montana portion. And as a result, this time is known to them as the time that they sold the Sweetgrass Hills. I want to say that things got better, but of course they didn't. The Blackfeet people in 1894, uh, this is actually the lowest point in Blackfeet history. At this point in time, there is only 1,811 people. Now imagine you're one of these two chiefs, and you're basically watching your people drown in the epic of history. They're completely impoverished, they've got no food, basically no hope. So again, when they're summoned to a meeting in the middle of winter when no one hardly can attend, the government gives them an offer. Unfortunately, they can't refuse. So in the winter of 1896, the US government, hoping to find land in the mountainous portion, the Rocky Mountain Front, this last portion of Blackfeet land, they ask the Blackfeet if they'll sell that last portion for another one and a half million dollars. And again, I wanna say the Blackfeet had a choice, but they were so impoverished, so stricken by hopelessness, they unfortunately agreed. And this part even included one of their more, another one of their more sacred sites, which is Chief Mountain, which you may have seen in Glacier Park. Chief Mountain uh, is the site where old man, their creator god, summoned the people to this mountain and gave them their unique languages, similar to, the, similar to the Christian Tower of Babel myth. And this is also the place from which he, um, old man, took rocks from Chief Mountain and made the Sweetgrass Hills. So it's a very important site. But again, 
Chief White Calf in the selling, in, when he decides to sell this land, he makes a really ominous statement. And he says, Chief Mountain is my head. Today, my head is cut off. The mountains have been our last refuge. We have been driven here, and now we are settled. From Birch Creek, that blue line, to the boundary line is what I give you. This is an ominous statement. You know, he recognizes this is, this is what we got. This is one of our most important places. You're going to take it from us? How heartless. And so now we come to kind of the, the badger medicine, two badger, badger to medicine as we know it today. So in 1910, part of the land that was purchased from the Blackfeet, it turns into Glacier National Park. President Taft makes that. And the rest of it turns into, well, eventually turn into the Lewis and Clark National Forest. And the Badger to Minnesin is a unit inside the Lewis and Clark National Forest. It's bounded by Highway 2 and Glacier Park in the north and the Bob Marshall Wilderness to the south and the Blackfeet Indian Reservation to the north and northeast. So it's a very key ecological place. It unites, it's a part of that wilderness area. It's a, uh, an excellent habitat for lots of animals. In fact, one source even says that it's one of the only places where the habitat and the animals that are living there are basically the same as what Lewis and Clark saw. So it's a very important ecological, ecological place. So now we come to the most important topic. Why is it so important? Now this is what I wanted to, re this is the question I most wanted to address because think about it this way, okay? Before the white man came, the whole, this whole continent was occupied by Native Americans. So basically everywhere has some special sacred significance. So, you know, what's to say one place is more important than another? You know, if and if uh, companies were prevented from drilling anywhere that any group said was sacred, well, they'd, they wouldn't be able to drill anywhere. So what's so important about the Badger to Medicine? Is it really that important? Is it really worth shutting down all this opportunity to save it? Well, that's the question I wanted to ask. And I, was, I actually discovered it was a lot more important than I realized. So first of all, in our... In understanding why it's so important, we kind of have to look at the heady topic of Blackfeet metaphysics and ecological values. Basically, how do Native Americans perceive nature and what are their values about it? So one of the first things to recognize is that the Blackfeet consider all things, from the quaking aspen to the wind that blows through them, as spiritual things, what they call naox or other than human persons. So there's no distinction between a human person and an, a spiritual other than other than human person. There's no distinction distinguish, and the word naox is used to refer, uh, refer to, you know, what we might call Grand, sacred grandmothers or grandfathers. The same word is used to refer to real people, as we would say, as opposed to spiritual people. So this is really important because this means that everything has moral significance. There's no distinguishing between the natural and the supernatural. So everything has a meaning and has a sacred power that they can consult. So another important thing to recognize, another example basically of this, is the sacred pipe. Now the sacred pipe uh, has its origins with thunder, the spirit, who lives in the mountains. So that is another connection we need to recognize. The fact that thunder, the spirit, lives in the mountains means that the mountains themselves have a spiritual value, it, just in themselves, to the Native Americans. So the medicine pipe is one of their more sacred objects and it's the most powerful of the of the pipes is the sacred medicine pipe another cool thing to recognize is that actually they believe that to speak the word bear in the presence of the pipe allows the pipe to have 
the bear gives it an evil influence. And so instead of saying bear around the pipe, they actually use the word badger instead. So this is another important thing to recognize because it just, again, shows us everything has a meaning. The bear itself, when spoken, can exert an evil influence over the pipe. The pipe is related to the to the sacred um, thunder spirit that lives in the mountains. So everything is has an important value to the Blackfeet people. In addition, other spiritual things they do in the mountains as well. They seek vision quests. They go there to gather medicine power. They gather sacred herbs and different articles for their religious things. And all of this is made significant by the fact that there's no one there. And that's a wild place. In the essay um, by Jay Vest that I read extensively and get a lot of my information from, it even mentions that the whole, the whole power that it has is derived from it being a wilderness area. This is important to recognize because if we have drilling that comes in there, and that ruins it for the Blackfeet people. So, in our discussion of um, Blackfeet metaphysics and spiritual things, we need to talk about the Blackfeet um, creator, Napi. Now, I talked, I mentioned him earlier, but let's talk a little bit more about him. So here's a picture, a little uh, of him, illustration of him. Napi is their black, is their creator, but he's not like a person or a god as many as Christians and Muslims and, and Jews perceive him. He's not, he doesn't, he's not a thing or a person. Instead, he represents like the ultimate life animating principle. So he's an ideal, he's a principle, he's a thing. He's associated with the sun and with creation. Part of the, his name, his name is actually a contraction of two different words. It's combined with um, Nina, the word for man, and Api, which George Bird Grinnell, after which one of the glaciers in National Park is named, he described that word as really describing the color of early dawn light. And so you could interpret his name as dawn light color man. Another thing is that this color is actually the color of black, old Blackfeet men and women's hair. So this whole interconnecting may be one of the reasons why he's also called old man by the Blackfeet in many of their uh, accounts. So, not P is significant because not only because he's the creator, but he's a part of a legend which is, uh, distinguishes the Badger to medicine from other sacred places. Napi was actually blown through the Badger to medicine area in the legend of the birch tree and the origin of wind. So this is one of the points to help distinguish that the Badger to medicine area is not just any area, it's important and it is distinguished uh, by, by this legend. So, in this legend, Bat, uh, Napi is roasting some prairie dogs, a lovely meal, I know, and he's roasting them and all of a sudden a bobcat steals it, and so he gets all angry at his nose for not alerting him, that the bobcat was there, and he gets angry and he shoves some willow sticks into the fire, and of course the fire burns up and it burns his nose and so to to assuage his pain he decides that he's going to summon the wind and so he starts to chant and i am going to butcher this pronunciation but he chants i eek so buta i eek so buta i eek so buta blow harder blow harder and so that develops a wind and the wind becomes so strong that it actually picks him up and starts to blow them across the landscape, and it's only far down here at Birch Creek that he manages to grab onto a birch tree and save himself from being smashed to bits on the landscape. So he's very grateful for this birch tree, and he praises it as a beautiful tree, and he says, man, you deserve some special decorations. So he takes out his knife, and he 
carves gashes, little markings and ornaments.